Hello everybody and welcome back to the latest episode of Dudes Watch a Movie Podcast. I am your host, KC Powerman 5000 and with me as always is... It's KG Solo Man 5000. My initials are not KG. And I'm also my power man. Because this is what it's I like when worlds collide. Name. I know. I, I took, purposely told you, or didn't tell you that I was going to do that. Just so you'd be put on the spot. I'm DS Solo Man 326. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, this week we are wrapping up uh, our 420 Blaze It April as voted on by you, the fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fan. The fan. Singular. Um, <laughs> we decided. Uh, in lieu of watching another awful, terrible, bad movie, we yeah. were going to watch uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, and that's Tenacious D and The Pick of Destiny, which also marks off my want to watch a musical for this, because I don't think we'll ever win that vote, and honestly, we've done one of the only two musicals I like, so I mean, I'm okay with this now. What's the second one? Cross the Universe. I've never seen that. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's it's a super weird movie. Like, it starts out... The song about, about Beatles, right? Yes. Gotcha. Uh, which I don't even really like the Beatles. That's how good that movie was to me. Uh, anyways, this movie, uh, I do not have a plot synopsis for me. I lied, but I'm just going to kind of give it a, I got you, a fam. run through. Thank I got God. You, fam. Ooh, I just hit the back button a couple times, scroll the way up, hit the button, hit the thing. I feel like and if I did the synopsis, I would accident, well, not accidentally, I would just end up saying the whole movie. I mean, that's which true. Which would go forever. That's true. Yeah. Go ahead. Hit him with it. Let me uh, fix my struggle to read and I'm prop this up. This is by Mad Movie Maniac. Nice. Uh, to become the greatest band of all time, two slacker wannabe rockers set out on a quest to steal a legendary guitar pick that gives its holders incredible guitar skills from a maximum security rock and roll museum. Solid synopsis. That was a long fucking run. Sentence. <laughs> it Jesus, really was. was. There was not a single I was comment for a pause so I could sound dramatic. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and for those that have not quite pieced it together, that pick they're talking about is the pick of destiny. It's true. Forged from Satan's tooth. Yeah. Um, just before anyone, you know, sets out on a life quest. Not a real thing. Nope. I don't think. Um, pretty sure they made it up for the movie, which... <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> just, just, a, just a hot take there for you. Uh, the first thing I noticed about this movie, which I don't think I ever noticed before, was it says THC instead of THX, and then it says the audience is baking. Yeah. I didn't make the reference to THX, honestly, when I thought about it. Yeah, because they did the little sound that they used to do before movies. <laughs> right, actually, you know what? Before we get into the movie itself, <laughs> I think I would like to uh, establish some other things first. Okay. One, have you seen... I, you've seen parts, but not the whole movie, correct? Yes, I've seen it in bits. Okay. Um... And two, how familiar are you with Tenacious D? I mean, I've, thanks to our uh, fan submitted video before and his and or her obnoxious amount of listening to the same thing for a long time, I have heard of all of Tenacious D's songs. I have okay. not seen any other media other than their music. Okay, because that's what I was wondering. So. Um, so we'll talk about that later. Anyways, after that, uh, we start off with Kickapoo, uh, where Catchy. Um, Jack, or Jables, as he's known in this movie, uh, although I will interchange those throughout this entire thing, uh, is a child, and he plays his parents a, a song that he wrote, which involves uh, fucking a dragon and cutting off his cock, uh, which they do not appreciate. I not think it shows creativity, <laughs> but... That's the difference between me and them as a hypothetical parent, I suppose. Uh, so his dad, Meatloaf, which is the first of a bunch of really cool cameos uh, as a comedy and a uh, music fan. Really? Oh, of course, uh, I'm not going to know most of these, so right. you're going to hear me say, oh, yeah. really? I did not know this. Fascinating. <laughs> um, he, he takes him to his room and rips down all of his hard rock posters like 
you know, ACDC and Queen and Kiss and Heavy Metal the movie, which is a cool one. But he misses the all important Dio poster on behind the back of the door. The back of the door. And that starts number two of the cool cameos, which is Dio himself. I mean, I would have figured that one. He's a holy diver himself. I'm just going to start singing and I'm not mm-hmm. going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a, as a kid, um, a really cool like wow they got actual fucking people in this movie because honestly meatloaf n- not really my jam uh but for whatever reason apparently my dad loved meatloaf paradise by the dashboard lights i believe it was a meatloaf also and i only know oh. this because my buddy uh his dad was also a huge meatloaf fan i think it's just a dad band <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, you should ask your dad next time he seems like now i know you loved rat no, i can tell you it's not one of his favorites <laughs> i don't know you just give him the chorus to bat out of hell and see what happens <laughs> honestly the only song i really know by meatloaf is i would do anything for love mm. but i won't do that do that do that he never says what it is no nope. uh but dio i definitely liked more because a holy diver is a banger of a song it's fucking fantastic although uh rainbow in the dark is better i can confirm that i mean if i heard it i could tell you what it is i just don't know the songs by the by the names you yeah know. and it's I, me. yeah it's you uh and my mother who took me to go see this movie in theaters with my my buddy brody uh when we were about 13 years old oh deb uh yeah she's a cool mom well the one thing she she definitely was not impressed with this movie i can give you her take right now if you're curious it's not her type no well you'd be assuming you'd be surprised that's an assumption um but the one thing i remember her saying as we got in the car was you shouldn't tell your father to suck a cock Out of the entire movie, that's what she pulls from it. Yeah. <laughs> I can just so being that entrance scene, I imagine throughout the whole rest of the hour, fifteen minutes, she's just thinking, "Oh my god." She was probably stewing in hate, <laughs> and for some reason or another, we didn't sit by her. So that means, which I'm just now thinking, she was sitting by herself somewhere in this movie theater, thinking. This is inappropriate. (laughs) But she never came and got us. We saw the whole movie, and it was fucking an immediate classic to me and him. Um, (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) But that always still sticks out to me. (laughs) Tell your father to suck a cock. Shouldn't do that. (laughs) Of everything in this movie, that's what what she stuck with. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I love my mom. (laughs) Mother's Day is coming up. Mm -hmm. I actually, that acoustic guitar I played, I got that the day we went to go see this movie. Nice. And previously, uh, she had only, and to be fair, probably myself, had only seen Jack Black really in School of Rock. I think you told me about that one, actually. So I feel like it was kind of a... An out of nowhere twist because this really is similar to School Rock. But I'm for assuming adults. she was expecting something a little more kind-hearted. Probably, <laughs> probably. When you get those two together. Hell to the knot. Yeah, it was a bit of a shocker, I would assume. But I immediately wanted to take my guitar back after we got it. Uh-oh. I didn't actually say, "Hey, let's take it back." But all I could think was, mm, "I want that guitar with the." horns on it Mm. the acoustic that he gets from kyle Mm. oh that thing was the coolest it was pretty dope that whole scene though too like when he sees the guitar the panning up slowly up the whole bridge the guitar all the stupid symbols (laughs) and the bejeweled crown (laughs) it's so fucking stupid Uh, but the cutaways are so cool right right uh it turns out custom made guitar for the movie not possible to buy (laughs) never found it jeez um, let's see what I, th- so the reason I asked you earlier about familiarity with their other stuff is especially the beginning seems really disjointed. Hmm. Like there's a lot of just random skits that are happening for lack of a better term. Well, I put in my notes specifically, it felt like a music video. Like the whole opening was a music video mm-hmm. style almost. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it kind of was, if you listen to that album for the, I mean, for the movie, and it, you know, was written for it, but you're right. It's just, it was like they're trying to follow a map. Like, this is what we have first. This is what we have next. Type of thing. I don't mm-hmm. know. Like you said, sequential type skits. And I mean, it makes sense because the whole thing really is. I mean, a music, a rock musical. At that point, you could basically just do a giant continuous scene of 
music videos like mm -hmm. Pink Floyd the wall kind of similar Makes sense. Um, but and I never really put this together until previously I think it's because they used to have an HBO show and it started to seem almost like a a skit show similar to that or like Flight of the Concords where the there's a loose arcing story between the episodes, but it does just kind of jump around and mm -hmm. they just throw in songs. And I wonder if that's maybe why it didn't get so well received when it first came out, because it doesn't seem to follow a normal like movie pacing. Not at all. Um, which things just happen. By the way, it leads me to a bit of trivia, which I read right off the bat, and it's just so fitting. And this is me drawing it out as I'm trying to find that little yeah. spot. I was you should, uh, you should uh, Bam, right here. Tab. Jack Black said that he vowed never to write a script again because the box office failure of this film mm -hmm. made him lose his confidence. Yep. Sad. Bombed hard. Although it has definitely turned into a cult classic since then. Was he, um, for School of Rock, did he direct that or no. write it? Or nope. He just act, just, yep. just an actor. Okay. He was just in it. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, I, I think Mike White wrote it. Hmm. Who plays his um, his friend, the oh, nerdy no. teacher that the one he's impersonating? Gotcha. Um, uh, another thing that uh, I definitely didn't grasp as I was younger was the Clockwork Orange scene, uh, which now having seen Clockwork Orange multiple times, I really appreciate how well they did it. Like mm -hmm. they got the actual soundtrack, they did like the what do you call it? The come on, give me the Kubrick shot. The uh, yeah, I know, right? It's right there, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. How everything, uh, one, one, uh, one point perspective. Yes. Thank you. Single point perspective. So, yes. There it is. They set that up with Same the way. palm trees and everything. Um, I just thought it was funny because the guy was like, yeah, he does look like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a wee baby. <laughs> it works on so many levels. Those who haven't seen it. It's worth a 13 year old kid. Worth a peep. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Um, let's see other things I had never noticed before since I've apparently just gone off on that topic and there's not a whole lot of time times I've seen it but I did notice this time that the video game Kyle is playing towards the beginning is where he gets his training for the car chase at the end yeah actually I just read that yeah the car he, chase in the video game yep. Kyle plays at the beginning ends the same way as the actual car chase at got the, end the ramp the and everything mm -hmm. uh I think that's uh there's a couple foreshadowing moments that kind of go unappreciated sometimes by those those snob critics critics just, yeah just like, mm, mm. um also a bit of trivia here um meatloaf mm -hmm. had not sung sang yeah that's that's an a no no had not sang in a movie since the rocky horror picture show because he wanted to accept it he wanted to be accepted in the industry as a serious actor, even though his appearance in the Pick of Destiny would ruin him. He took the role of JP's <laughs> father anyway. That kind of makes what a sense. Trooper. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and on top of him and Dia, which we mentioned, mm -hmm. and you were just reinformed of the devil being played by Dave Grawl. Dave Grawl, yep. There were a couple other people that popped up that I always forget are in this movie until they're just about to show up on screen, one being Amy Poehler. No, oh, is the the waitress, the the cafe waitress. Yep. Uh, Fred Armisen is one of the night security guards. Ben Stiller, that one. I was ben like, Stiller. What? What? Uh, and do you have any guesses as to who played Sasquatch? No. John C. Riley. Oh from yeah. From Step Brothers. That was in here too. Yeah. Whole bunch of really funny people in this movie. Hidden under a bunch of uh, makeup. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some of them. Anyway. And out of the group, I honestly, I think Amy Poehler. Probably the best. There's mm -hmm. something S fucking Ooh. hilarious about. Did you charge us for all of our refills? No. You're so pretty, you get them for free. <laughs> and then just walks away. It's just so satisfying. <laughs> and he's just like, that's a really good deal. <laughs> uh, I like in this movie also, which I don't know if it's on purpose or if it's just the, the route they decided to go with the movie. Um, Kyle is the master guitar player who's going to teach Jack how mm -hmm. to play because in reality he is a super good guitar player. I believe it. Uh, and from everything I've seen, Jack Black is a self-admitted not great guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know, I can, I can get my way through a song, but don't, don't expect to have your mind blown by my skills. He's just got the attitude. Mm -hmm. 
he's got the chutzpah. Yeah, he's got enough. Uh, he's got enough drive to do it, and he's got the intensity and the Character passion to act for both of them, mm-hmm. basically. And he, uh, that's on full display in this movie. He is not afraid to go balls to the walls. And I, almost a little creepy. Yeah, he does a lot of yelling in this movie. But uh, that's that's Jack Black's character, though. What movie is he in where he doesn't yell? Nacho Libre. But that's only because he oh, talks like this. Right. Yeah. It was a low blow, but it's whatever. <laughs> um, I also appreciate how hard he goes when he's crying. <laughs> <laughs> the baby cry? Yeah. <laughs> I broke my your man. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking this movie's so stupid in the best it way. It is. It is. They they cheesed it up hard, and I I love every moment of it. Honestly, can I admit, uh, uh, my first movie I ever saw with Jack Black in it was uh, Shallow Hal. That's not bad. It's That's not bad movie. at all. Um, it didn't age well, but mm, I just yeah. remember having that film and being like, this guy's kind of funny, and then seeing him in other films and being like, he's a lot better in these other ones. You know the the message of that movie aged pretty well though yeah i mean he teaches not to just like people based on the way they look i mean at the start he's just basically body shaming her mm. and then she's going at the paltrow i guess <laughs> i don't know is there anything particularly about this movie that you want to talk about um i guess during i, I liked so well, on your topic of talking about how it's like in a sequential order with like musicals, mm-hmm. I noticed the use of the tarot cards, almost like starting a new chapter. Yeah. And I, I, I really enjoyed that concept of it because it kind of gave you the whole like film scheme of your rising action and whatnot mm-hmm. so and, the, and the hardships that they overcame. And so I thought that was kind of clever. It is kind of like almost a weird art choice though Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily make sense with the rest of the movie but i I like it so it's never bothered me i just don't know where they got the the tarot from other than it's vaguely satanic i guess uh i mean i feel like anything else i've seen that's uh tenacious d like they have i don't know maybe it's just because anything i've seen was after that movie maybe but it's just they have that medieval-ish kind of feel about them just because rock is old true also, thing. I mean, they even play a medieval-styled song when they do the history of Tenacious D, mm. which I feel like should have got a bigger response from those audience members. If I was at just a random open mic night and someone played that song and they were doing those harmonies, I'd be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be their I friend agree. who's just like, yeah, Like I actually dude. put that in there. <laughs> Honestly, if I had first heard them at that mini concert, I would have loved them. This crowd is hella whack. <laughs> I mean, they do at least clap for him. A but, few of them. But they, they I, I would have been cheering and trying to whistle as best as I can. <laughs> Although I can't do the super fun whistles. Um, what did you, I guess you're probably familiar with the songs at this point, but mm. I feel like there seems to be a split when I talk with other people who like Tenacious D as to when I'm like, hey, what, what, what Tenacious D do you like? They'll either talk about like their debut album, which has... Um, tribute and the self-titled um, one yeah it's mm-hmm. got wonder boy and all those songs on it uh or they'll be pick a destiny well the thing is is i think their self-titled album the reason why it may have gotten so popular it was during that time where people used to rip cds mm. and that was probably one of those prime ones everyone liked because we were at that prime age where like swearing and cock jokes were the best that's so that's actually a really good point yeah because i i do i remember being younger and going on like limewire and napster and stuff like that and at least half of what i had on there was like comedy songs mm-hmm. and like weird al and those were the ones that you show everyone Adam else Sandler yep and, yep and they're all gonna laugh at yep. you <laughs> that is a fantastic point sir thank you yeah. um but no honestly i i enjoy all of their stuff i mean i wouldn't say on an equal bout mm-hmm. having listened to tenacious d before all of the film i mean i thought they were more on the adult humor side at my age of when mm-hmm. i was listening to them but as i grew older i I they're gained def- a, a they're, better appreciation. And they're definitely... It. It's weird because when you're younger, it seems like more adult comedy. Mm-hmm. But when you're older, you're like, that's kind of actually really more sophomore. Right. A lot of fart and cock jokes. Yep. <laughs> but they say with adult language. Exactly. Which I think is part of the charm, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally, I think I do... I lean a lot more in the direction of Pick a Destiny. Mostly because I find it easy to picture everything that's happening throughout the songs with how many times I've seen the movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still like Tribute. Um, Wonder Boy is hilarious. And there is a UFC fighter whose nickname is Wonder Boy. And he does come after that song. And it's amazing. (laughs) Uh, But I just, I think 
the the visualization of it and also the I guess the 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 composition or the just the chops that are on display I think it goes to the whole next level with this movie um, there are songs that even if you swapped out the words I think would still be great just because mm-hmm. the music them the music itself uh, is really well done and they've got some fucking dope riffs in there mm-hmm. the metal has a awesome riff and it's one of my favorite things to play in the world saying that through the whole film i know and i can i was the whole time doing this with my fingers (laughs) (laughs) now i wonder how your opinion would have been about the album had it not been with a movie like the album itself Mm -hmm. because you said you kind of like it for the whole fact that you can visualize it all yeah but i mean is that solely because you've seen the film probably i mean i'll never know for sure because i saw it what's been so yeah exactly um and I do wonder if I had just heard the album itself, if I would have appreciated it enough to pay attention, because I think a lot of the fun of this album slash movie is, is knowing the songs and like, they even have a version on the DVD that's a sing-along form where mm-hmm. they've got the heads bouncing across <laughs> the screen and stuff. Um, I do tend to think that it gets better the more you recognize where they're going and it becomes more of like hey we're all in on the joke this mm-hmm. time so i don't know if i would have liked it as much if it wasn't made into a movie and it was just their their sequel album right no that's one thing i've come to realize when i i listen to an artist and i really enjoy them there's one album that i will cling to and mm-hmm. then when another album comes out not really having anything to reference it to or like check out you notice the artist evolves and then you kind of have a a bitter taste of how you feel about the new album yeah until you actually start giving it some more listen yep. some more listen and then it grows on you because it's not as that's kind of how i felt about it's not as comfortable yeah you don't exactly you don't immediately recognize everything for example dumbfounded his mm-hmm. new album i didn't like right away and then i just was like hey let's give it some listens and then it's like right, you know this isn't mm-hmm. so bad and there are those rare occasions where they'll put out an album that is just miles better than their previous stuff mm-hmm. especially someone i think it works in the opposite effect so if you really like someone and they put out a new album that's when you're just like because uh, you're judging them a bit more harshly yeah but if sense. you just like kind of like someone on the fringe and you're not super into them but there's been a couple things previously you liked and then they put out that one album that really grabs you i think that's fire i think that's where it flips the switch yeah. you know that's, that's kind of how i was with uh with watsky because mm. i heard some songs before and then cardboard castles came out that thing is front to back amazing and then after that just nothing's really lived up to it to me but i've also never given it the chance of the re-listens because mm-hmm. there's just too much shit to listen to it's true too much shit to listen to mm-hmm. too much shit to watch and i think that not only happens in music but also throughout every every medium um i th- to a degree in a tv show if it goes on long enough it does get to the point where you're just running out of ideas and the story can't go anywhere else and it Looking feels like you're on a treadmill. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, and what some people are saying, Game of Thrones, although fuck those people, it's I love it. It's almost over anyway, so... Right? I'm not looking forward to that, but I mean, it has to end somewhere. I think it. I think they go through that same arc of emotions because when the show first comes out, it might have an actor they know or it might be on a channel that they watched other shows and then this one hooks them and they're like, yes! Mm-hmm. And then the first like two or three seasons will be that album that they... There's an, enough of it where they can go back and rewatch it, but not enough where they, they feel like it would be a burden. Yeah. So they watch maybe the first couple seasons multiple times and they see more things and they notice more stuff and like, they're like, this is so good. Connections. Yep. yep. And then by the time you're on episode or season five, six, seven, you're just like, it's just not as good as it used to be. That's true. Um, I don't know. I've never, I guess I've never put any thought into that until now. So I'm glad we figured something out. Maybe. Yeah. Learning. The more you know. We went from going on discussions about movies to discussions about music, but hey, well, you that's know. okay. They, they all it go is together. A movie, so. It <laughs> is a musical, I mean. And it's the best kind of musical, too. It's true. Where they're not just saying, and now I go make myself a cheese sandwich. I hate it. When I just, I fucking, I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you, but I hate it in a musical when there's describing what they're doing and they they definitely poke fun at that and this when he's breaking into the well i'm gonna keep calling it the rock and roll hall of fame even though they go out of their way to specifically not say rock and roll hall of fame because they probably couldn't get the rights to it that's trademark uh, i suppose probably and they would also have to go all the way to cleveland which would suck mm. um but cleveland rocks you've blown my mind <laughs> um 
Uh, you blew my mind so hard that I actually forgot where I was going. I derailed that. that train with that explosive yeah. thought. Hold on, we'll get it back on track. So when he's breaking into it, um, he is in that song. Uh, I think it's. I think it might be called "Storm the Gates." Can't remember. Um, he's sense. he's literally describing everything you're seeing on this screen. Um, so he, I mean, he goes around the corner and he's like, oh, oh, electric he's guy. It. And he's talking about the, the camera and he talks about diving into the bushes and diving down through the, the vents and shit like that. Um, I, to me, that is a, a play on that trope of musicals always constantly narrating what they're doing, which they don't have to because you can see them. It's true. I don't know. I agree. I agree. I mean, it, it gets annoying. It gets to the point where people usually sing what they're doing when mm-hmm. they're bored and have nothing else better to do. And so to bring that to light, to be something professional is... Eh, eh. And uh, you just reminded me of when he does that, when he's doing the dishes, and he's trying to narrate everything he's doing there too, <laughs> which could be the callback. Who knows? Cool. Um, I think that's where a lot of musicals get their their bad rap. Mm. If you know, like, Because if you're like, hey, let's watch a musical... Even my immediate reaction as someone who loves music is just like, uh, uh, yeah, kind of no. cringy. I feel the same. Yeah, um, I've never seen Rock or Rocky Horror Picture Show. Everybody says it's decent, I've but I've never I'm seen it like, either. Uh, I've seen Rent. No, no, not Rent. Um, uh, uh, what's the one where people take things? Oh boy, where they take things? Yeah, Repo. I've seen oh, Repo, that one wasn't too bad. No, it was weird, yeah. but I've seen it. The genetic so. opera or whatever mm-hmm. it is. That wasn't too bad. I forgot about that one. Was uh, was the Angry Inch, was that a musical or was that just really weird? I don't remember that. Hedwig and the Angry Inch? No, maybe you didn't see it. No, I definitely my, haven't that seen That was my that. other film class in mm. Kirkwood. That was real weird. Mm. Give it a watch. It's kind of strange if you like yeah. Goomy Bears. Reference to those who might have seen it. You've lost me. For the first time, I think I'm officially lost on this podcast on a reference. Look at now now you know how it feels to be me. It hurts. <laughs> it sucks. It hurts. Um let's see what else we want to talk about. Um so So like I said, I don't have a whole lot of notes. I, I just I've seen this movie a bunch of times, so I was just gonna sit here and pretty much answer if you had any questions about anything. <laughs> Um, I did like the, how they came about with their name, the Tenacious the <laughs> Tanak birthmark. <laughs> I've got ass mark too. <laughs> Oosh D mark, yes. Mm. Um, what else do I have? I liked his uh, <laughs> try to snatch it. Mm, what does he have? The remote, <laughs> yes. That and Patience, young grass smoker. <laughs> you're bringing me to uh, something else I've noticed with this movie. If If I've ever been talking with someone and they've mentioned that they know this movie Mm -hmm. there is no like yeah i watched it once it's i'm going to quote four things and they will finish that quote every time (laughs) so i it's it might be a would would i be calling it a polarizing movie i guess you either love it or you hate it Mm -hmm. there is no in between i mean i'll go on the on the roots of in between just because i mean i wouldn't say it's my favorite it's it's good, right? But I mean, when I think of films, I try to always—I I don't say blockbusters, but mm. usually I like to kind of see a spectacle when I see a film or mm. something that kind of pulls at me. Whereas this one's just kind of a a silly story. Mm-hmm. I know it's surprising coming from the guy who loves slapstick comedy, right? but I don't know. Like I said, I don't love slapstick comedy. I enjoy watching it, but I get no substance from it. Whereas this one, I, I kind of get the story of a band. Yeah. So, and the thing is, is maybe it's because I don't know a lot of the references. They kind of go over my head since it's a lot of old rock references. Yeah, and, and the cameos. Yeah. Now, I feel someone like you, who is mm-hmm. huge into music, mm-hmm. you would find a greater enjoyment for it. So maybe that's the polarizing. I mean, like, that when makes you talk sense. to people about it, are they usually the people that love music? Yeah, or they at least have a fondness for, like, classic rock, mm-hmm. which... I mean, in my middle school years would have been my go-to music of choice, especially after school rock. Mm -hmm. Um, I immediately went down the rabbit hole of, like, um, Cream and those old, like, 70s, 80s rock stuff. Uh, I immediately was like, I love Black Sabbath and Ozzy now (laughs) because Jack Black likes them, and that guitar is the coolest in that movie, too. Honestly, at the time, you were probably listening to classic rock and loving it as long as, as well as a few of my other friends, I was listening to punk rock. 
and so I didn't have a whole enjoyment for the classic rock, which now I find a little bit more enjoyment because mm-hmm. I've I've grown an appreciation for it. Hair metal is just too catchy. Yeah. 80s. Oh my Jesus yeah. Christ. But Fashion Sense was fucking horrendous, <laughs> but man, they could write a hook. But at the time, I was my skater kid type self mm-hmm. and listening to like No Effects and yep. the Casualties and all of them, mm-hmm. and just I was more on the two minute songs. <laughs> <laughs> right, which you still carry over, because fuck Just me if Metallica bit. comes on. <laughs> yeah, no, no thank you. Um, which is kind of strange, because who is your favorite punk band of all time? No effects. If oh, you're going to yeah. try and bring Blink-182 out of you me, to. that's, you know that's you pop to. punk. That's a specific genre that's just more uh, alternative. <laughs> We're not going on this debate. A, because you're more educated in musical arts, and B, that's just a very opinionated feeling. I just wanted to be mad at you, but all I could think was like the 90 different forms of metal I know. Yeah, <laughs> stop. And so I couldn't. I couldn't, and I was mad at myself. Um, okay, Tom, who's it your was favorite pop punk band of all time? <laughs> then yes, it would have been Blink. Where I was getting Old to Blink. is their With sense Tom of DeLong, humor. Tom it doesn't sound like fucking Bono. Before the aliens. <laughs> their sense of humor is right in step with Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. For the most part, yeah. I yeah. would agree. It's just, it's more toned towards the classic rock side of things. So. I could see there being a track on Take Off Your Pants and Jacket called Cock Push Up. I'm ashamed to admit that it was only two years ago I, I understood that reference of that album. I shit you not. As a hardcore fan, I was very disappointed in myself. Well, you know, it sometimes... It glazed over me the whole concept. Sometimes when you hear something <laughs> too young, you know... You yeah, just, just, you just like, take it for what it is. Exactly, that's what yeah. I did. And yeah. then as I got older, I was just like, what? <laughs> and I, I had a laugh. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, but it took me way too long to get that reference. I'm proud of you. Thanks. You've reached a whole nother level. <laughs> uh, anything else you got on, on your list over there? We've legitimately <laughs> gone through every single thing that I think I have written down. Which other is than, probably like five lines. Yeah, it's all in <laughs> references to... To the cameos, uh, and that Ben Stiller was executive producer, which now I get to feel ashamed because I saw that popped up and I was like, oh damn, because it was on the intro credits. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I was kind of surprised. I mean, I know him and Jack Black are friends and they're in movies together, but I was kind of surprised he executive produced this. And then as soon as I went to Guitar Center, I was like, oh right, he's in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he's so good at getting into character that I forget it's him. And I thought, I, I thought it was Claudio Sanchez the whole time. I used to love Ben Stiller, honestly, as an actor. Um, Isn't it weird? Uh, Looking back, he's not that great, right? Is it just me, or is there a lot of hate for him as an actor? Not that I know of. No. I mean, people shat on him with Zoolander too, but he deserved it. Oh, yeah, maybe that's what I'm getting it from, but, like, like, I I used to enjoy his movies thoroughly, Mm -hmm. and then I guess at some point, like, Nick Cage, you kind of are no longer... Well, I guess Nick Cage... Well, that's a whole other level of uh, actor people. But anyway, Ben Stiller, I used to like him. Mm -hmm. I still kind of do. I haven't seen Zoolander 2 and I probably don't want to don't, if that's what's going to happen. Please don't. It's awful. I got through about 20 minutes and I had to turn it off. And I don't I turn movies the first off. One. Um, Is it like when Dumb and Dumber tried to come out with another movie it was just as bad? Are you talking about the newest Dumb and Dumber or the one without Jim Carrey? And the, one, the newest one with Jim Carrey okay, like when yeah. they tried to bring him back. It, it was, it was very similar to that. Yeah, it's okay. like they had a couple of funny moments, mm-hmm. at least in that one. But for the most part, it just seemed like a rehash. And they were trying to just reference the other movie, which is not what I'm here for. I could just go watch the other movie if I wanted that. Yeah. No. Uh, when Justin Bieber showed up, though, I was thoroughly pissed. Oh, he was in the new? Yeah. Oh. Which, I mean, I guess it follows in suit with the first one since they had Fred Durst, who was also super hated. But... True. Well, not super hated by you, but... Right. No, I love that that garbage man. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Uh, um, I I, I talked about um, how JB was running through the forest and Mm. the start of the whole Sasquatch scene. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad I found these mushrooms. Said no one ever. Yeah, no. No one just eats mushrooms. Like, oh, hey, yeah. But then again, I guess it, it leads to his childlike blindness to the world. That's true. Because he did run away at the age of, like, 12. And he went across the United States, like, from the middle mm-hmm. all the way to the east, all the way back to the west. Well, he was hitting up all the different Hollywoods in USA because he didn't know which one was the actual Hollywood he was supposed to go to. Wait, what? Yeah. I missed that then. <laughs> so all those stops he makes on the map, they're all yeah. different. Like, there's, like, Hollywood, Florida. There's, like, Hollywood, South Carolina. I did know that. And then he finally, the last one he goes to is Hollywood, California. It takes him that long to figure out that's where he was supposed to go. 
<laughs> I'm you, an idiot. I yeah. didn't know that. I guess it makes sense. Like, there's little China mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. I guess I, I'm not as cultured as I thought. So he listened to Dio. Mm-hmm. But since Dio is a musician, he can't just say where he has to go. He puts it in forms of, you know, uh, veiled veiled hints. Uh, so he should have, I assume he should have figured out Los Angeles mm. is where he was supposed to go. Because he says, the city of fallen angels where the ocean meets the sand. But he doesn't catch that because no. he's 12 and he's just like, ah, I got to go to Hollywood. <laughs> And Dio actually does spell out the entire plot of that movie. That's true. Yeah. You'll form a strong alliance in the world's most awesome band. You'll fight your inner demons through the valley you must walk. You, no, wait, I flipped him around, but whatever. And then he tells him to go my son and rock. And I would assume his inner demons is literally Satan. Hmm. You mean Dave Grohl? Yeah. <laughs> Who is also literally Satan. It's true. The man never ages. <laughs> and he I looks mean, that just like the a lot of people, Rana. though. That's true. It's people in the music industry now are really creepy. Honestly. They're vampires is what they are. Yeah. It's Gwen Stefani has not aged since 1994. And I, I do true. not like it. I do not like it. That's a good point. I know. It's freaky, isn't it? I, it's, it's weird to me to think that she used to be like in a little punk band and now she's on her own little mm-hmm. thing. Anyway. Sorry. Um, uh, she was not in a punk band, Tom. She was in a ska pop punk band. <laughs> you have me there. All right, uh, I did make a note about Jack Black in this character. He reminds me a lot about Chris Farley. Yeah, like hyperactive mm-hmm. and a lot of physical movement. And I think that's what draws me towards Jack Black as an actor mm-hmm. himself, just because he has that uh, energy. Yeah. And I was that's a real a big fan for of, of Chris Farley. It's nice because Rest it's... Rest in peace, good sir. It, he's like... It doesn't feel like he's doing a, a complete ripoff of that shtick. No. But like I said, he's got that same energy. He has same, his originality yeah, about it. The same passion for it where he's like, I will do anything to get this laugh. The yelling, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I feel like this whole time we've talked a lot about Jack Black, but I do want to talk about Kyle Gass because uh, he is really the unsung hero of that band um, with what he's able to do on there. But he's also hilarious in this movie. Um, I feel like he, uh, it's hard to shine when you're standing next to Jack Black, but God damn it, that man crushes this movie. He reminds me of a child trying to play as an adult, like trying to pretend to be an adult. I think he has that I think little it's his bits. face. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's kind of got, got a baby a, face. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the part is when he's a kid and his hat gets taken mm-hmm. off. I fucking lost it. <laughs> it's every time it's hilarious. That might be my favorite part of the entire movie. I, I don't know for sure. I didn't write down any of my I stuff. I saw it coming, but I just, every time, I don't expect it. It's just the... <laughs> The image of that chubby little kid with his pants up to his belly button and his polo tucked in, having a hard line of hair all the way across, and the look oh. of just sadness on his face. That's <laughs> glorious. They, they picked a really good likeness mm, for that they child, because that transition between them was great. And he, I'm like, oh. he goes really over the top in this movie. But every time he pulls a face, I think it's hilarious. He's just like scrunching up as much as he can with the cameras panning in on it. (laughs) Ah, so good. I wrote that KG is the barbarian equivalent of stealthy when they're invading. (laughs) He's like, get low. He's just like, I know exactly. He he jacked as a somersault and he just kind of goes, oh, man, spins around. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Immediately, I was thinking of our D&D campaigns when Mm -hmm. I'm always the one that's going stealth and then it's like, He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go stealth. And so our, our barbarian rolls for stealth. And if anybody plays Dungeons and Dragons, you know how that goes terribly. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. Or if it's, I mean, would that be his, I mean, they didn't trip any alarms. So would he have succeeded in yeah. a roll of stealth? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, he succeeded. <laughs> he, probably had, uh, he probably got a roll advantage since uh, Jack was doing so well. <laughs> you know, I think the, probably the, the top two things we talk about on this movie podcast is D&D. Mm-hmm. And how it was a movie for his time. <laughs> I think we got to start having a theme going. I know. I mean, it doesn't help we're playing in our old D&D spot. That's true. That's Not playing, I suppose, podcast. Our, our, our old tabletop nook. <sighs> yeah. Well. You got anything else? I do. Oh, shit. <laughs> I could just I could keep, I could, keep I could going. Keep going. Keep going. Um, the soundtrack. I made a comment sounded like Danny Elfman specifically on the more angelic tones mm-hmm. that was going throughout it. 
Maybe not just Danny Elfman, but I also put Russell Shaw just because I'm a huge fan of Fable and therefore was listening to the Fable soundtrack a while ago. And I, it, I, I felt a little bit of that in there, which is leads me back to their feeling of the whole medieval mm-hmm. like thematic yeah. art styles. And also the, the fight of, of, of heaven and hell, mm-hmm. which I guess it's mostly just hell. Yeah. They don't really talk too much about the heaven aspect of it. Um, but I... It's that is uh, I don't know if I'd say a musical trope, but definitely, definitely a style of music that I always enjoy. Mm. So it's hard not to, right? It just something about the the music and the the voices in harmony mm-hmm. is always really good. There's a there's an Atreyu song um, where they do that about halfway through, and it kind of breaks down, and they. They harmonize in that that style, and every time it gives me goosebumps. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And all I can think is Edward Scissorhands and how much I love that movie. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. I remember falling asleep to that, and then waking up to the DVD menu over and over and over because my ass was too lazy to get the remote and shut it off. What was worse, that DVD menu or the Undertaker DVD menu? Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a death march, right? <laughs> I take it back. Number one thing we talk about Funeral is D and D, and number two is wrestling. That's <laughs> true. Uh, what else you got? Uh, well, I had the quote: "Use the cock <laughs> to turn off the mm-hmm. button that's by the laser, like for the lasers that's by the guitar." Another good Obviously, foreshadow worst, callback moment. Worst place for that button to be. Also, speaking on things that are kind of terrible, I wouldn't say it was terrible. I, I couldn't stop pointing it out during the driving sequences. Oh, Kyle yeah. Gass was driving. Mm-hmm. They were either on a trailer and he couldn't turn the wheel, or it was a take that he just didn't turn the wheel, but the whole time his, his hands just glide over the steering mm-hmm. wheel. And so I'm thinking in my head, what sort of setting would you be in that you can't turn the wheel of a car? I can guarantee you the majority of that they were on a trailer uh, and what they it's really I don't know if you've ever seen one before I mean I've seen basically what looks like the equivalent of a car on the back of a trailer but that's about it but the way they do it is they will lower the platform that it's on so that like it the trailer or yeah okay. so like there will be the front and then it'll go up over the wheel and come back down and mm-hmm. the car will sit in that so that it looks like they're the proper height from the road behind it uh, but okay. they're still being pulled around by another vehicle so that they don't have to worry about actually trying to drive while they right. act and they can mount camera systems and things it's actually really cool but they can't turn the wheel see that that's I don't know what the biggest, problem is I feel like most problem. people can turn the wheel I, I don't know it, what that issue was I don't know why it bugged me but it did yeah once he pointed it out I was like I can't stop <laughs> seeing this now I'm sorry yeah um I guess it goes on to, uh, I guess one thing I did notice in there is what time setting is this supposed to be in? It would because have been, it looks like they have really old, like 80s shit, but. It would have been present time of the filming, which was like 2006, I think is when it came out. Mm. Um, it felt old, I guess, in the, like what they were around mm-hmm. and like, I guess the technology they were using. Just think that's how far we've come in a little over a decade crazy to think i guess also i mean where they were at to kyle is not super rich so everything he has not first of all he's not even super he's not even regular rich or has money period he's like broke as fuck and he's living off 200 dollars paychecks so from his mom from his mom love you pumpkin love you pumpkin (laughs) um so everything he's amassed will probably have been over those like multiple years and years of trying to make it like he he blows off an old uh record or not, mm. not record, but a tape recorder that they would have recorded on back in like the yeah, 70s a, and yeah, 80s. Yeah, it was a tape, right? Yeah. A real tape. Yeah. That's kind of why I guess I got thrown as to what era this mm-hmm. is supposed to be taking set in. But as soon as they go into Guitar Center, which, whoa, we need to talk about that for a second. That <laughs> really opened my eyes to how little Guitar Center has changed in that time period. Everything still looks the same. Maybe they just haven't updated the one Blue near us, but and fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why change a good thing, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> but when they go in there, I mean, that was all current stuff to that time period. So I it would have taken admit place the walls were a little less cluttered than it was in the movie. In the movie, it was just, there was an overabundance of things everywhere. Whereas nowadays, it seems a little bit more uh, spread yeah. out. Yeah. Spaced out. A bit cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back. But their color scheme is still the same. Back in that time, you had 
maybe like a foot and a half of an aisle to walk through mm. and there was just gear everywhere um they used to have rows and rows of different amps you could try and shit it was fucking amazing <laughs> Um, they just, they have like random piles around now. I feel like they would be amazing and also terrible. Why? Because you have all those people in there trying to play all their songs. Around here was never really a problem. Okay. Like there'd be a couple people, maybe at most. Playing all the like, same shit. Not even that, but there was like three or four rows of amps and there'd be mm -hmm. like one person on this one, one over here. And most people were nice enough to not turn it up super loud so that other people could hear themselves. Um, but every now and then you'd have that f one fucking asshole who just learned how to tap. <laughs> And he's like, fili, 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 as loud as he can. Putting smoke in the water. I hear that one a lot. Yeah. I hear a lot of the same shit every time we go there, too. I really do appreciate in that movie, the songs you hear in the background are super common. You hear when you're, <laughs> when you're in there, it sounds like what it would sound like if you walked into a guitar center. They, they captured the, the environment they well. Did. They did. Even, even the workers look like they're actual workers there. I wouldn't be surprised other than Ben Stiller if they just were like, hey, you want to be in this movie? Sure. <laughs> I need you to ring this up. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do my job? Or do you want me to pester the customers every two seconds and ask them if they, if there's any, can I grab you a guitar? Like, no, man. No. I feel a little hypocritical seeing as I do that with customers where I work. But not to the same level. And I do help them if they ask for it. Fair enough. Well, getting out of that, I mean... I've pretty much exhausted my notes. Cool. I just have little bits of things that are unrelated but kind of silly. Um, the guard not wa operating his walkie-talkie was, was a good little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. And why was it that he couldn't operate it? I don't know. I think I missed the reference there other than he just wasn't skilled. It looked like he was trying to be way too cool. Him and his uh, partner, Fred Armisen, were getting baked oh, I, and the I security must have missed that spot that, that part then and i say there's a little scene where they're yeah they're, they're, they're that rolling part. it up and stuff and when when fred armson freaks out he knocks it all off the table um which i feel like for those who've seen it is understandable but those who have not seen it this might have seemed like a weird choice mm -hmm. for this month um but there is just constant references they're subtle i guess mm -hmm. they're not as blatant as as how high how high yeah but i mean straight off the bat they had that thc reference um they when he's sad about breaking the guitar he's like we'll do bong rips and we'll watch in search of sasquatch and his uh his answering machine mm -hmm. oh yeah <sighs> uh i can only assume that my mother was also not very happy with that <laughs> drug references mm -hmm. man although no, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about my mom on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> a little late for that. But yeah, well, we'll, I mean, I'm not going to go we'll into go other that. stuff. We'll go yeah. past that. Yeah. Um, we did, <laughs> this podcast, uh, throughout the history, I believe, the only <clears throat> other members of our family we've ever mentioned is constantly your dad and my mom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad is, like our movies, a man of his time. Yeah. He's very noteworthy. He's got a lot of good... <laughs> Good callback references. It doesn't help we watch, watch a lot of movies around the 80s. That is true. That is true. Very seldomly do we have something updated or stupid old. It's mm -hmm. that era. Mm -hmm. Was so, this... No. Not this wasn't that. our first movie of like the mid-2000s, was it? Uh, No. I mean, I would assume Dead or Alive was probably around there. Yeah, 2004. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say, how did we miss all of our... like? Are, say, are a real good, good chunk of them childhood are, actually, movies. If yeah. I go back, I have dates. How high was in two thousand? Right, but I was um, thinking more like our junior high movies. Shaolin Soccer was two thousand one. Uh, do you really have all the dates written down there? On some of them, I do. That would be kind I of. I tried cool. to make a point of it, but yeah. Oh, uh, you have one for every movie we've watched. Yeah. I just keep deleting. Oh no, I've I, yeah. I kept my notes here. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I just didn't label them what episodes mm -hmm. they would be yeah. so that I could probably figure that out mm -hmm. every time we do this. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, we're reaching the end. Yeah. Um, Let's wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you this time, you start. Things you didn't like. Nothing. Well, that's, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I did notice it was way more disjointed this time. That's really the only negative I have for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, a lot of it's just blind nostalgia. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, mine was the just the little nit, it's being nitpicky. It was the wheel part. That wheel part. I just couldn't yeah. get over that. Yeah. I didn't like that. It, it 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 took me out of it and probably took you out of it too. Sorry. No. Nah. But I just just it, yeah. Whole movie was kind of. 
I don't want to call it B movie, but it definitely seemed like it really did just seem like a really long episode of a TV show like the budget they had and stuff like that so this is my apology official apology to all those who will watch this movie now and see that and mm -hmm. get taken out of it but just saying yeah that is my thing i didn't like yeah um things you did like i suppose favorite scene we'll put it right. that um this is out of order but you know whatever my favorite scene is master exploder um mm. i was really torn between when Kyle is younger and gets his hat knocked off or the the scene when he's on the mushrooms um, but it's definitely Max to Exploder it's one of my favorite songs on that album and I love how it starts out really mundane and he comes out just kind of having that douchey attitude because uh, it's in a dream sequence so mm -hmm. in his Super mind cocky. everything's going great and then they really help nail home that it's a dream by the guitars keep changing he's got the one who licks the vagina and she freaks out and then he's got like six arms and like, Jack sing without a microphone. The very beginning part of it was the part that I liked where he's like, these guys told me to read this card, but I didn't want to. So I'm going to read something I wrote mm -hmm. and it's all true because I wrote it. This band is the best band. I don't know the exact words, but right. that's the gist of it. Uh, and he's another relatively famous comedian. I, for life of me, can't remember his name, but I think it's like Paul F. Tompkins or something mm -hmm. similar to that. Um, he does a pretty good job in this too as being just kind of... I did wrote so he, he was actually uh, so my my favorite scene was the bald scene mm -hmm. and then we'll bump into that MVP moment because he was my MVP actually was he the bar guy. yes um, he actually does a really good job of he makes an impact in the movie but hanging out in the background to the point where you never think he's gonna be the ultimate bad guy mm -hmm. um, I love the speech he gives before they go in where he talks about <laughs> Satan isn't an item. Right. He's right here in our hearts. Everyone. <laughs> they just twist the, the, the nice storybook ending and put <laughs> Satan in place of love. It's fantastic. <laughs> yep. Um, I, it's, it was hard for me to pick an MVP, but I feel like you have to go with Jack Black. I mean, I tried a lot I'm of times. The movie. A lot of times, I feel I like I try bad. to pick something that's not the obvious MVP choice, mm -hmm. which I don't. I think might not be uh, the proper, the proper route to approach it. Because I mean, if someone is a clear MVP, why not pick them? I know I'm about to make you go blank here, but it's something that happens in the NBA all the time. Every year, LeBron James is the MVP, but they don't want to give it to him every time because it's the it's the obvious move. And I think I'm going to have to start correcting myself because I go way too far out of my way to be like, oh, it's this one character who shows up in one scene. It's always Kobe Bryant. It's the MVP. I'm trying to get a ruse out of you. It won't work. <laughs> my will is strong like Ox. Next up? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what the fuck moment? Yeah. Your WTF moment of the film. Uh, I, I don't have one. I've seen it too many times, but I can tell you as a kid, the one that I would say I had chose is definitely when he deactivates the laser with his cock <laughs> because he's used the cock and then he starts pulling those faces and then you just see it. And it, I swear it's like the way it's shot and the lighting behind it mm. almost makes it look like it's, it's like supposed to be some epic space landing. <laughs> 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 he ducks. He just come on, helmet head. <laughs> um, that just was a real hard turn when I was thirteen. I was like, no what pun the intended. Fuck is happening. Oh, there you go. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, my what the fuck moment was the whole mushroom sequence. Mm. It really kind of, mm -hmm. <laughs> really kind of put me for a, for a spin there. I was expecting it, being as it's almost a trope in every movie where if mm -hmm. you take psychedelics, it's got to be some animated sequence. But it mm -hmm. wasn't animated. It was live action. What the fuck? Right. The whole colorful fields and and it does have some of the funniest parts when it like because it stays in that animated ish live action Strawberry realm. River. That was my. Favorite. And then it immediately him like in almost the drowning rapids. in the rapids. It's yeah. Just like, yeah. I think it's good because they don't overdo that joke too many times and let it play out before it pops back the mm -hmm. first time. Oh, the tree. It's so good. So good. <laughs> when he's, oh, my God. Yes. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That is uh, that is Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. A solid, solid, solid choice, if I, I do recommend. say so myself. 
I almost didn't pick it. It's redeeming yeah. for compared to what we last watched. Yeah. So, and we'll pretend that Luke uh, recommended it to us. Wasn't wasn't you said almost didn't pick it? It was a last minute pick for you. Yeah. I. What was your I, original plan? My fallback plan was Pineapple Express, which I didn't want to do. I, because that's like the beer fest of February. It would have been the obvious one. Well, no, I feel like Chi Jin Chong would have been the obvious one. Um, or that. even, um, shit, what is it? The one with Dave Chappelle. Oh, not Friday. No. No. Nope. Um, no. I know what you're talking about. Half baked. Half baked, yes. Um, I actually forgot, forgot about that movie until just now. But it's. We had just recently watched Pineapple Express not too long back, and I know for sure that you, you have seen that multiple times. Mm -hmm. And so I, since you're always talking about sticking to the rules... Something you never do anyway, so why I did you choose to do it this time? Because that's the twist. Now you expect me not to follow the rules, I'm going to be a real fucking stickler. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I was going to pull up a list and just check them through, and as soon as I sat down, for whatever reason, it just clicked and was like, oh yeah. You're Pick not a notorious destiny. G-I-N-G or mysterious, unpredictable G-I-N-G. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, if any of you have made it through this video... Congratulations. You, you pat yourself right on the back if you have arms. It's right there. If not, pretend you do and do that. I don't think we have any viewers that are handicapped, but I do want to be inclusive. This is 2018. Right. The year of our Lord, Satan. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't... What do you What do you got? Hit him with uh, what we got coming up next month. Updates. Oh, I haven't even. Oh yeah. Well, the fifteenth hasn't hit yet. Right. No. Yeah. We're, we're still recording this. The, let him maybe give him a little. Uh, what's to come in terms of their choices? Oh, I didn't write any of those down. Did you? Nope. No. Um. <laughs> so it's May. Uh, obviously, I, I, I talked about it in our last mm -hmm. episode. Anna May yep. is going to be a choice. Yep. Uh, may the um, force be with you. I yes. think we have written down. I know we do. Um, we do have them written down. I don't know where you, you moved that thing. Now. Yeah, I, I stuck it behind over there. Oh. But, uh, so stay tuned. Yeah, I guess. I'll, I'll post it on the yeah. Facebook group. Mm -hmm. As many of you will get the notification for and probably just ignore it anyway. Um, click the vote. Share it so that we get some more votes on there. Get some views. Not that they matter, but... I strive to get some sort of constructive criticism out of these. True. Like, please, someone, yes. tell me if we're doing real shit yeah. and what's a problem. Because, I mean, you can't really grow unless mm. you have someone telling you you're right. bad. Right. I mean, Which, I mean, phrase it nicely, please. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I have it. You are the editor. So I just might um, yell back at you, which I'm afraid of. Um <laughs> and I appreciate the the couple people that I have left comments on the video. Yes. Um, I cannot for the life of me remember your name, but next time I might call, uh, I'll, I'll remember to pull it up and call you out. Um, but they've let us know some mistakes we've made, and they've also gave their, their two cents on some movies. You gotta which, let me know. I don't get these notifications because you're yeah, the moderator. Uh, yeah, that's true. I um, only go on the episode and scroll down to see what I can see, mm -hmm. but I don't go back. Right. That. Good point. See, look, constructive criticism. That's how it works, folks. We learned it. Uh, but I would, I mean, I would absolutely like to talk with people about movies. I would talk with anyone about movies. So if you write them in on the YouTube comments, you will get a response most likely. Mm -hmm. Unless your comment was, tell the ginger to pull his dick out. <laughs> Which I do know who that was. <laughs> That's not too hard to guess. <laughs> right, because you told me. <laughs> That's true. Um, but no, I, uh, so... I'm kind of wanting to try and put this in a podcast form. Mm -hmm. I don't know what media's outlets you folks listen to. I know Spotify is a hit, but that seems to be a real big problem. So mm -hmm. if you're into the sound clouds, um, keep an eye on there. I'm going to make the effort. If it's not on there, sorry. That wouldn't I be guess. a bad poll to put, too. Like, what do you guys listen to? Because I know for sure we've, we've talked to someone who... Um, their big issue is they do not have unlimited data yeah. and they mostly listen to this when they're at work and not everybody has YouTube red. Correct. <laughs> um, so if we can get it into a download form, it might Would be you easy. guys take it. Yeah. Listen to it on the, the, the ride in the car or listen to tenacious D and the pick a destiny soundtrack. Cause it's fucking banger. You should. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's what's to come. Um, maybe a few extra tidbits here and there, which when they arrive, you'll see 
Mysterious. Now yeah. who's the mysterious one? I'm dropping dropping hints. Oh man, you're foreshadowing. Dropping Easter eggs. That's not an Easter egg, but okay. And no, it's not. Easter nope. is done and over with, that being said. Um, other than that, I think that's all that we have for you folks today. Cool. Um, so I'll post that stuff in the groups. You guys check it out. You guys do your thing. Thanks for watching and listening. Whatever format you decide to listen to this on or watch this on. I'm rambling. Let's wrap it up. Let's go. What you got? Okay, bye. <laughs> Later.